So let's begin. We are not PGA Tour players. That is the first thing we have to reconcile when we start to think about breaking 100. Because these people are playing a different strategy, a different game in another universe compared to us. We are trying to break 100. And why are we trying to break 100? We're not qualifying for the US Open. We're not trying to qualify for the PGA Tour. We're trying to break 100, not necessarily only as a scoring barrier, but also as a confidence barrier to allow us to go play golf with less stress so that we don't feel we're holding anyone up. We don't feel that people don't want to play with us. We don't want to embarrass ourselves. We want to make friends to go and play golf with in the future. So this is the thing to help you to break that 100 barrier, get you some confidence to get you to the golf course more often to make new friends and thereby lowering your score even more and making more friends, having more fun getting on the golf course more. You can't be a driving range rat all your life and you can't play solo all your life because the best thing about golf is making new friends. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of this system. Our goal here is to shoot a 99 or less. That is to break 100. So to shoot a 99, it's 27 over par. Okay? 27 over par on a par 72 course. That's 99. Now, the first step in freeing ourselves of this, this pressure and, and the, the idea of this par 72 is to change our whole mindset on how to approach the golf course. Step one of that is to actually take your scorecard before the round and have a look here, okay? I don't know if you know this yet, but if you don't, just here's the information. You have something called a stroke index on the scorecard. It uh, goes from number 1 to number 18. Basically, just basically, I don't need arguments from the know-it-alls in the comments, but basically it's the hardest hole is stroke 1 and the easiest hole is stroke 18. This is exactly how we are going to get to a par 100 or par 99 golf course, okay? That's how we're going to break 100. We're not playing par 72. We're going to get to a par 99 or par 100. That way, if you do shoot a 99 or a 98 or a 97, you're one or two under par or level par compared to being 27 over par. Now, how do we get from 72 to a par 99 golf course? Well, I'm going to tell you that right now. These stroke index holes here, because they split from 1 to 18, each hole has its own one. What we can do is basically say that from hole stroke index 1, to stroke index 9. Those are the 9 most difficult holes. We're going to add some shots to the par of the hole on the scorecard. Because if you're playing off a 27 handicap, for example, the, the amount of strokes needed to break 100, you are allowed to make double bogey on those holes according to that handicap. So, stroke 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we add two shots to the par of the hole. So we're not playing a par four hole here. Because it's a stroke index six, we're playing a par six hole. Okay, this is very important, and I'll explain why as soon as we've done this. So for every hole that we have a low stroke index from one to nine, we add two to the par. Par four becomes par six, par four becomes par six, par three becomes a par five. So we have a par 5 hole that's 173 yards long. This one becomes a par 6. The par 5, the most difficult hole on the course, is no longer a par 5. It's now a par 7. This one is a very short par 4, but it's not. It's now a par 6. This one becomes a par 6. Another par 6. And to finish, we have another par 7. So these are the new pars that you have on the golf course. You are no longer feeling the pressure of needing to get the ball on the green in three shots from 480 yards to make a five. We must remember that par in golf is an excellent score. It's got nothing to do with what you see on the television. That par for, for a pro is basic standard. For an amateur golfer, a par is a brilliant score with the av world's average handicap being 15. That means an average score of about 90 will give you a handicap of 15. Average score of 90 means 18 bogeys. So if we are scoring any pars in a round, it's a brilliant score. But a par on the professional rating is a, is a brilliant score for an amateur golfer. So what we are doing is giving ourselves a new par 
instead of putting the pressure on us to make brilliant scores. Now we're making our scores, okay? For every hole above, above number nine on the stroke index, we're going to give ourselves another shot on par. Anything from stroke one to stroke nine, the nine most difficult holes, you add two to the par of the golf course. Everything else, you add one more. Do you see how this works now? So instead of having a par four, this becomes a par five. That par three, 180 yards, is now a par four. Hmm, interesting. Par four becomes five. Par five becomes par six. Par four becomes par five. Par five becomes par six. Par four, par five, par four. Now when you add this all up, this is going to equal 99. Now you can add another one to any one of these holes. Any hole you feel, you can even add another one. Let's go with... Um, let's go with this par 5, 475 yards, this is now par 7, and we can change this, players, to be a par 100 golf course. Now, I'm not telling you this as a joke. You literally take your scorecard before you play, and you change the par on the scorecard. You write it there where the number is that they've printed, and you write your new par, and then you write this at the end. That's it. That is step number one. This is a very big step because it relieves the pressure you feel when you go to play golf to try to break 100. Because now your par is 100. Now let's talk about green in regulation. The par of the hole generally dictates the number of the shots needed to hit a green in regulation. That means whatever the par is minus two putts because it allows for two putts. So it's pretty simple to work out the green in regulation on these holes. So four minus two putts is you have to hit the green in two. Three minus two putts, you have to hit the green in one. Par five, two putts, you have to hit the green in three. That's a bit ridiculous. I mean, look at this. Look at this 390 yard hole for someone shooting 105, 110 to hit that hole in two shots is a bit of a tall order. Now, what we have done here is created a new par for ourselves. So by doing that, we also automatically, if you just count yourself as two putts, because we, that is one of our goals as well, is to two putt everything at worst. So what we do is we give ourselves a new green and regulation number as well. So because you've shifted your expectation on these holes and you've made par four, five, six, and par seven holes, you minus two from there, okay, to get your new green and regulation. So now instead of trying to hit this 370 yard par four in two shots, it's now become a par five and you need to hit it in three shots. The par three becomes a par four, and you only hit, have to hit that in two shots. Four minus two putts is two shots. Look at this par three, it's a stroke seven index. That means seventh hardest hole on the course. It's changed to a par five. So that thing is 173 yards par five. Do you see where the mindset shift happens here? Where you no longer have the pressure of trying to hit whatever club you have that goes 173 onto the green and then messing it up and getting angry with yourself when you walk off with a five, when actually five is your power. Now, if you can hit that green in under regulation, and you take two shots to get onto that par three, you're under regulation, you two putt, and your four becomes a birdie. This is how we now take even more pressure off our game by not stressing about hitting these holes in professional regulation. We hit these holes in our regulation. This par five minus two shots, is five shots. You have to cover 480 yards in five shots. Do you see how the pressure is released from you by creating your own par and thereby creating your own green regulation? The entire game changes from playing PGA to a level scratch golf to playing breaking 100 golf. That way when you do shoot your 99, 98, 97, you're one under, two under, three under par instead of being 26, 27, 28 over par. That is a big difference. It's a big mindset change, and this is one of the key concepts about this, is that you have to change your mindset. We are not PGA Tour pros, we are 100 breakers. Now players, there's a very key concept now, that we've done this, that's fine, we've done it. But now there's something even more important than that, is that you are not to keep track of your score in your head, or on the side of the card, going plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. There is, there is no circumstance under which you are allowed to count your score up during the round, halfway after nine holes, or on your watch or your phone that you keep score on, there must be nothing 
that shows you your score, your score relative to par. I don't want to see it. I don't want you to total up your score after nine holes. Okay, I don't want you to do that. That goes out of your mind immediately. That is the one thing that kills, that kills golf scores. If you take nothing else out of this video, take that one tip. Do not count your score, ever. Until the end of the round, when you're sitting in the clubhouse, away from the 18th green, you're sitting down somewhere and you count up your score. That's how you break 100 the first time. That's how you break 90 for the first time. By keeping it in your head and watching it on your, on your, your, your watch, and seeing it increase all the time, which it will, you're going to lose the will to live. And if you see that it's quite low and you're close to breaking 100 on the 17th, 16th, 18th hole, you're going to screw it up. So let's rather not count it, okay? 100% this tip works for every scoring barrier. Don't count your golf score anymore until after the round.